All right, we are recording. Welcome to the fourth iteration of the Introduction to Teaching with Canvas course. My name is Chris Rogers. I'm the Instructional Design Technology Specialist here at Grossmont. Many of you are familiar with uh, me and have worked with me in the past. Uh, joining me also today is Jim Hotz from the CSIS Department. He will be the lead instructor for this course, and then I will be serving as a backup uh, position to add any additional support that Jim may need. You say hello, Jim. Maybe tell a little something about yourself. Hello, everybody. Um, I just took uh, Chris's course, um, what, last semester, and so uh, just recently learned about Canvas myself. So I've dug into it a fair amount, though, so I uh, hopefully am going to be in a position to help you out. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. All right, so as we get started with this lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mute all of you. Before I do that, during the lecture, during the course of my lecture, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them during the lecture. Go ahead and ask them in the chat box. I'm going to type in the chat box right now. Do you see this message? I asked a question. Make sure I may send it to everyone. Do you see this message? Please, for the 13 people that are here, please reply yes so I know that you found the chat box. Awesome. So at certain points during the session, once, uh, once we get started, um, if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat box and then I will take certain breaks before I move on to the next topic and then we'll check out the chat and see hopefully and then by the end of the chat or by the end of my lecture once i'm done with the actual orientation i'll also open it up hopefully during the last half hour we can do i'll unmute everyone and then do an open question and answer period that being said let's get started and jim can you still hear me uh, yes, but I think you've muted me. I unmuted you. Oh, okay. And then the participants and entry. All right. So the first thing I need to do is share my screen. And to do that, the first thing I want to do is give you the access information. You might want to grab a pen and a piece of paper at this moment. The address to Canvas at Grossmont College is gccd. Dot instructure. That's I N S T R U C T U R E. Dot com. Your username will be your web advisor username, or it's your legal first name. Dot last name. And your birth date is, or the password for Canvas is your eight digit birth date. So that's your two digit month, two digit day, and then four digit year. Also, you will need to, when you plan on using Canvas, I'm gonna assume that most of you plan on using Canvas for the fall 2017 semester. You will need to provide this, uh, inf this access information to students and I'll explain why in a second. Also, I just want to reiterate too, I am currently recording this session. So if there's ever a point in time where um, I'm, you want to take notes and you want to jot something down and I move on to the next screen and you're not able to capture all of those notes, like for example, this screen right here, don't be concerned. I'm going to record this recording. Once this session's done, I'm going to post this recording up on YouTube and then I'll post it in the course and you'll have Later on tonight, you can review everything uh, that we've covered, and then you can capture any notes that you might have, uh, have missed. So let me select the new screen that I want to share. So let's go to, let's go to actually Grossmont College. So Jim, can you see grossmont.edu on my screen? Uh, no, I'm looking at your uh, Zoom settings. Zoom settings. Let me make sure. 
How about now? now okay, we. perfect. All right, so as I mentioned, um, when you go to the Grossmont website, you're going to see uh, Blackboard and Canvas. And typically, you know, when you click on the Blackboard logo, you can click on the actual logo and it takes you to the login screen there. So you would naturally expect, common sense would say, if I'm gonna click on the Canvas logo, it's gonna go to the Canvas login screen. It does not. And there is a specific reason why it does not at this point in time. As we're still continuing to work the transition process from Blackboard to Canvas, we want to make sure that all faculty have proper training in some form or another, in or another, like the training that you are taking right now. We do not want faculty to go in blind without any guidance on how to use Canvas properly. That's why we were holding off on the link. You receive some form of Canvas training, and then you can show myself and Janet Gilb in our DE department how to use Canvas. We'll give you access to Canvas. Um, hopefully, depending on the number of people that we train and get through through the summer semester and probably the start of the fall semester, we'll uh, debate on when this link will be posted. But I guarantee that by the end of the fall semester, this link will uh, point directly to the login screen to Canvas. So until then, until that time, you will need to provide that login information to your students, the URL address and then how to log in properly, whether it's in your syllabus or any orientation uh, um, letters or emails that you send to your students before the fall semester. With that being said, let's access Canvas. By the way, also uh, for browsers, I recommend Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox. Do not use any version of Internet Explorer or uh, the Microsoft Edge browser, which is on the Windows 10 operating system. I am currently using uh, Google Chrome. That has been by far the best uh, in my own experience, my, uh, the best performing browser for Canvas, but Firefox works just as good. So again, the address is gccd.instructure. Dot com. The login is your web advisor username or it's your legal first name dot last name. And again, the password is your eight digit birth date, two digit month, two digit day, four digit year. And then you can go ahead and log into Canvas. Right away when you log into Canvas, you're going to be taken to your dashboard. Your dashboard is located in the global navigation menu. And I'll quickly go over these items one by one so we understand what these are. Uh, to begin, you'll see that you will see an icon or uh, a icon of myself. This is your account uh, access where you can edit uh, information. So you can edit your, if I click on this link, you can edit your profile information, your personal settings, your notifications, which will be important. We will get into that once I get into the introduction to teaching with Canvas course. And then there's some other areas here, but these are the most important areas that you need to be concerned about right now. Profile, settings, notifications. Admin section you do not see in your course. This is only mine because I have admin rights, but what you do see is your dashboard. Now your dashboard contains different courses. So if you were to think of Blackboard, in Blackboard you, ex you access the, the My Courses box um, to access your courses. This is the same thing right here. And this is used to access the most commonly used courses that you want to focus on. Right below that is your courses. Now if I click here and I courses and then I click on all courses, you will see a list of all of the courses that you're currently teaching at the moment, or all the courses that you've taught in the past that will be concluded here. For the scope of our training course, you wanna write this down. The course that you will be paying attention to is the GC4 Introduction to Teaching with Canvas course. That is the course you will be focused on. You also have a training sandbox. So that is going to be called GC Canvas Training and it will have your last name at the end. 
any coursework that you do within the GC4 Introduction to Teaching with Canvas course, the majority of it will be done and conducted in your training sandbox. Uh, I'm gonna look at the chat here real quickly. Does that make sense to everyone? I know that when I took the course, Chris, it was a little bit tough to get my head around the fact that there were really two sandboxes that I was dealing with in the mm -hmm. class. One is the course itself that I'm taking as a student. Right. The other is the course I'm developing, which I'm in as a teacher. Correct. So all of you will be in that same situation. You've got two sandboxes, your teacher and your student, and those are two separate. Perfect. So when you go into your actual course, oh, let me ask uh, Clark ask the question. At the end, is there a means to move the sandbox into the live course? So Clark in the chat room asked, is there a means, by the end of the course, is there a means to move the content that you develop in your training sandbox into your GC, uh, into an official course? And, and the answer is yes. By the end of the actual course, you will learn how to develop or transfer anything that you've developed in your um, GC Canvas training sandbox into official course that you want to be teaching for the fall or summer semester. Uh, Victoria, I saw that you're trying to log into Canvas. Um, I will make note of that right now and I will touch base with you either during our open Canvas session or open talk or um, after the orientation has uh, completed. Let me make note of that real quick. Uh, my chat box went away, bear with me here. Uh, no, don't log into Canvas now. MC asked the question. Don't log into Canvas now. Just let's focus in on our orientation at the moment, which I will continue with. So with the courses box, if you're going to look at something, you'll have some of your courses that will show all of the courses in your dashboard that you're currently teaching. One of the first things that I would recommend doing is when you log, when you get a chance to log into Canvas, you can click on courses and then you click on all courses and you will notice to the very right hand side, you will see these stars to the, um, to the right of a title. For your training course, you wanna make sure that the star for your training, your training sandbox is actually selected. So if it turns like that, I'm gonna click on it to add it to the course menu. And then for the GC4 Canvas training course, there is another star. You want to make sure that this one is added to your course menu as well. And then for any other course that you sit here and see, you could turn any of the other ones off. So if I wanted to turn any one of these off, I could sit there and do that. And I could just have these two courses listed here. And when I click on the dashboard, my dashboard is a lot easier to manage. So I see my Canvas training course. I see this one and there's another one here that I've taught before in the past that I could turn off as well, which is down here. So I could turn that one off as well. And now my dashboard is a lot easier to actually manage. So with that being said, let's actually go into the actual course. And I'll break that down. And once we actually go into the actual course, let me finish with um, explaining the rest of the global navigation bar. So you have an idea, the dashboard is to access the courses that you want to focus on the most. Your courses list shows you all of the courses that you're currently teaching. And for any courses that are developed in the future, like for example, fall, spring courses, new courses will automatically be created by district and they will be listed here. So if you start teaching in Canvas in the fall semester and then at the end of the fall semester, you're starting to look for your spring semester courses, you wanna go into this section, courses, all courses. You wanna go into this section and you can see whichever course that's listed here and then you can turn whichever course you wanna focus on, on and it will appear in your dashboard. 
You have a global calendar here, which we'll talk about here. Um, your calendar. Realize that with Canvas, Canvas has a calendar section, but each course has its own calendar. If we look over to the right here, there's a bunch of calendars here that I have turned off. If I turn off, I can, I can turn on. Uh, right now, the only course that I have is a uh, separate course. I could turn this one off. And then I can turn the GC4 on, which is your course, and see all of the items that I have scheduled for this course. So you can do that with your Canvas course as well. And you can check to see all the events that are taking place. So for example, we have our Zoom orientation today. And then on um, June, by the way, on June 12th at 9 a.m., Jim Hotz will be running a, uh, an open lab session in room 55-534. Jim, would you like to take a quick moment to explain uh, that open lab workshop and your intentions for it? Oh, well, um, the open lab will be a chance to get together and ask questions and take a more face-to-face, -face, uh, less technology-intensive look at Canvas. Um, you can also use, you can also work on your assignments if you want to, and I can help you and the other students in the class can help you if they've solved the particular problem. And we can just uh, give a sort of a once over of some of the things that you're going to be asked to do in that week and um, some other things that may not be covered in the course that would be good to know as a teacher uh, when you uh, get up and running in the fall. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. Highly recommend those court to attend those open lab sessions. Um, they can prove to be a huge benefit. Um, we also have, you can see the schedule here, there's some open lab sessions open throughout the additional week. And then later on during this open lab session, and I might send out a survey to see whether or not Tuesdays or Wednesdays might work out better for you. Right, we're going to pick one. We're not going to do Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll, yeah. pick, we'll pick either Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever most people can manage easiest. Perfect. And then once we get into the actual details of the actual course, I'll, I'll explain um, the rest of the schedule. But that's the calendar. This is a good place to get an idea of what's going on each week. Moving on to the conversations inbox. The conversations inbox will be the key uh, tool that you will use to communicate with uh, Jim or myself. Um, you can go through here, I can select. There's nobody that we've conversed through here in, in Canvas yet, but through GC4 course, I select the actual course. And then over here, I click to compose a new message. And for example, if I wanted to contact Jun Yang, I could just type in her name. Her name would actually appear. And then I could fill in, you know, fill in my message and then send a message here. The nice thing about the conversations inbox is that it serves two purposes. One, you, it keeps a record of your conversations with your students. So for example, this is a conversation that I had with this instructor here, and I've had other conversations with other instructors that I've taught uh, this course before. And it also sends it directly to your email as well. So you have a record of your conversations uh, and interactions with your students. And the nice thing about it is you don't have to give out your email address if you don't want to. If you don't feel comfortable in giving out your email address to your students, you can have them just go through the conversations inbox. You can communicate with them on a regular basis and not be concerned about whether or not they're gonna get your email at a later date. So that's, uh, that proves to be actually really helpful. So for the duration of this course, ooh, let's, Clark has a question here. Let's see what Clark has. Can conversations be organized and sorted like email? Um, in here, with Clark, to answer your question, as far as sorting and stuff, I'm still getting used to it myself. Um, so if I wanted to focus on a specific course, so to speak, I can select on a course that I've taught, 
I can select past courses. They're sorted like this so I can see the courses uh, or the conversations that I've had for these instructors that are enrolled in this course. And through the inbox, I can sit there and I can read my unread, my starred, my sent items, our archive. Also submission comments are gonna be important to review as well and I'll talk about that later. So those are the, the amount of the extent of sorting options that you would have. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, it's very basic. It might not have all the features of email, uh, email program they use. I don't know if you use like Outlook. I personally use Gmail, but, uh, and it doesn't come close to all the features that I like to use in Gmail, but it gets the job done. I can communicate with people um, easily, get messages right away. And it's a great way to manage communication within your course. So again, to, if you need to contact privately Jim Hotz or myself, please use the conversations inbox for the duration of this course. Moving on, probably one of the most important sections that I wanna emphasize right now is the help section. So clicking on the global navigation bar, you can click on help. There are several guides here that we can take a look at. The first thing that I want to focus on right now is the call for help. You have a pen and a piece of paper. I would recommend writing this number down. And actually, I am going to post this number in the chat as well. So give me one second here. Canvas 24-7. Support line for both faculty and students. Grossmont. Uh, one thing I want, I reminded Julie Hansen, who I believe teaches at Cuyamaca. I'm going to post the Cuyamaca number here as well. So, Julie, if you can hear me, Julie and Cliff. The Cuyamaca number is what you want to use for any students that you teach at Cuyamaca. But for everyone else that teaches at Grossmont, you want to use the 1-844-600-4953. For Cuyamaca, it's 1-844-592-2201. Again, this is Canvas 24-7 phone support to our students and faculty. So if faculty or students have any technical issues with Canvas, you call this number. If students or faculty are having issues with password or access information logging into Canvas, you can call this number for support. Now, faculty members in the past or currently, I work with Jim a lot. Jim contacts me all the time if, he, if he's trying to learn how to do something or a design issue that he specifically hap you know, happens, uh, needs a question on. He contacts me during the business hours, but during off business hours, Jim will contact this number as well. So if you're unable to get a hold of me for any reason via email or phone, you're more than welcome to call this number. So I wanted to inquire, Jim, have you used uh, the phone support? And if you have, do you have any feedback on your experience with it? I have not. Uh, I have talked to others who have, and they say it's really quite good. good. And I haven't had to use it myself, no. Perfect. One thing I did find, and it's a night and day difference between Canvas and Blackboard, is that when you say just Google for help on how to do something, uh, you'll get an answer right away on Canvas, and it'll be a useful answer. Oh, on Blackboard, yeah, yeah. usually what I got was just a, a list of the menu choices that I could already see, and that wasn't too helpful. But Canvas has a much, much better community support. Totally agree, and that's the other part that I wanted to focus on as well. So just a, a final emphasis. I can't emphasize this number is enough. Canvas 24-7 port, Grossmont College. It's this number. For Cuyamaca, it's 1-844-592-2205. Now, I don't know about Cuyamaca, but I know for sure for Grossmont that there is no on-campus support for students in regards to Canvas. The point of entry for students, they need to call this number right here for Grossmont, 600-4953. 
students can't go to admission and records they can't go to the tech mall to get any support if a student has issues with canvas logging into canvas or a, a specific technical issue on how to do something they need to call this number first canvas it's the first point of entry for grossmont and then if canvas the rep is there if any representatives there find any issues with uh, canvas that relate more on a grossmont level that ticket gets forwarded to me and then i take it further from there so you want to make clear in your syllabus in your orientation emails whatever you do with your students make sure they get this number and they understand for technical issues for login issues 24 7 they can call this number for support now jim just mentioned the canvas guides and the resources that you have that you can use to extend your learning on canvas and and i'll second what jim mentioned the resources that are available on canvas are unparalleled to uh they don't even compare to what our blackboard doesn't even compare to what uh, canvas offers and to find those resources you can click on help and then you would say search the canvas guides there are a lot of guides here for uh, um, a variety of different topics um, if mobile is really popular we get a lot of questions from students inquiring about the blackboard mobile platform and um, i can contest that the blackboard mobile platform isn't you know that great and we don't really promote it that much because it's a poor application and they don't offer support however canvas totally different they have mobile applications for both I, um, ios if you're on the iphone or an android phone we don't support those we only support canvas but if you have your students asking about mobile guides or how to use uh, canvas on a mobile device whether it's a phone or tablet they can click on this mobile guides and they will want to look for the canvas app right here they click on the canvas app and then you can search whether or not by ios android or ios uh, information there um, and then for instructors canvas and then the speed grader app those are the two applications that you would actually need um, i personally did a test uh, for a canvas course that i was teaching um, I think it was the third one second or third one i actually taught the course one week on my cell phone on my on my my smartphone and it worked out really well so it's it's actually possible to conduct a course or take a course on this as a student on a mobile device with these two apps and you now know where to point your students to there's also a video guide section so as you're getting started in canvas I would recommend taking a look at some of these video guides for instructors. You can take a look at some of these things here. So for example, communication, I believe this is the one for, we talk about how to communicate using announcements, discussions, and that conversations tool. There's a variety of resources here that you can sit there and watch and, and review, and specifically with your students as well. Um, you can share students uh, Canvas overview video on how to get started in Canvas. A lot of instructors are sharing these student resources to their students who are currently teaching in Canvas now. And it's helped students immensely trying to get used to uh, Canvas. Jim, are you currently teaching in Canvas right now? I'm not right now. I will be in fall. I will be in fall. That will be your first time. Okay, good. The one I want you to point to, uh, the one I want to point to that Jim was talking about is the Canvas Guide section. There's one for students, there's one for instructors. I also encourage you to review the basics, but I'll quickly go over the instructor section. Clicking on the instructor section here, it covers a ton of information on any topic that you can sit there and imagine. So for example, how do I use the announcements index page? I can click on one of these items and it goes through step by step on how to you create announcements or use announcements or anything else. So if there's any information that you're looking to expand upon and, and know within Canvas, the Canvas Guides is going to be your number one resource for information on uh, learning about more stuff in regards to Canvas. Highly recommend using this tool. So that being said, that pretty much covers the global navigation. Are there any questions regarding the help or any of the features that I covered here? Um, if you have any questions, please ask them in the group chat. If not, we'll get started uh, exploring the actual course. 
I'm gonna get a drink of water. No questions are coming in. So with that being said, let's get started and let's take a look at the introduction to teaching with Canvas course and break this down. I'm actually, what I'm gonna do is what we're seeing is the instructor view. I'm going to go in the student view. This is something you'll wanna write down. You can review this. You can go in the student view of your course. As you're building out your course and everything else, you'll always wanna take a look at it at the student view. That's the correct view that you wanna confirm the content that you're creating is accurate. So what I'm going to do is going to settings and then I'm gonna go into the right hand column here and say student view. So you can see the course. This is how you will see the course. The course is brought up, broken up into two areas, actually three areas. The first area here we have is our uh, course menu, the course navigation. If home, we have certain items here, home, syllabus, modules. Modules is where all of your coursework will be conducted. Um, your required reading, your assignments, quizzes, and discussions. And then grades. Grades is where um, you can view your grades and view comments. And then people, you can view the roster and people in the actual course. You have your course homepage, this course homepage, um, I designed myself and you have the freedom. Later on in unit two, you'll be designing your own course page. And to break this course page down, it just has a simple banner um, with uh, simple items right here, course menu items here for discussions, uh, for the key items that are listed here. I have these button items here for a specific reason, one, if someone or a student or a faculty member actually closes what I call the hamburger button, your course menu disappears and I've gotten calls, I can't navigate the course. So if that happens, you still always have the ability to access the key areas of the course that I want you to access. And then also on a mobile device, your homepage on, um, I can attest to on an Android phone, these items come up right away. So it makes it a much easier way to access the course. And then what I do is I actually have links to actually the orientation modules that, um, that are here. So quick access to get started on each module. And the first one that we want to uh, go through is the start here one. I'm going to click on that in a second. Right on the left or the right hand column, you'll see a kind of like a to do list talking about what you need to do as an instructor. This kind of gives you a guide on where you need to be in the course. So for the to do, your first assignment that you're going to have is to turn in the 0 0.7 unit zero hands-on uh, create a course outline. That'll be due July 14th. You also have a, uh, a discussion that'll be due on July 14th. And then there's also a schedule here of items that are always coming up. So you can review this schedule to, keep, you know, to get a quick idea on what you need to do in the actual course. But when you log into Canvas for the very first time and you access the GC4 course, the first thing you wanna do is click on the start here, getting started orientation. It's gonna come up with a welcome page. It's gonna have 11 minute video. So this is going to be 11 minute video. This kind of takes you through an orientation. This is a more condensed version of the orientation that you're sitting through right now. So this would be a good one to review, um, you know, to get a more specific view on the course itself and what you need to be focused on. Um, uh, but if you've taken this orientation, you don't necessarily need to watch this, but I highly recommend you do just to get a refresher on uh, what you need to focus on in the course. Um, as a reminder, this course is technically six weeks long. Um, I typically focus, I say five weeks because I don't include the orientation section because the first week of orientation is pretty easy. But technically it's six weeks long. There'll be five uh, weekly learning units, again, not including the getting started orientation unit. And uh, we will make content available for each unit available for the f on Friday before each, uh, before, before each unit uh, begins. So to explain that, let me see if I can actually go to the calendar here. So today, Monday, July 10th, unit zero begins. 
all, as you can see on the course here schedule, your coursework for unit zero is due on the 14th. So you have a discussion assignment and then an outline assignment. The next unit, unit one, officially starts on the 17th, but I make it available on Friday at 8 a.m. So you have the weekend to work, uh, to catch up and work over your assignments. If that does not make sense, please clarify that. Please let me know in uh, the comments section. I'll repeat it one last time. Units start or extend from Monday to Friday. Unit zero starts on a Monday. Coursework for unit zero will be due on the 14th. Unit one will start on the 17th, officially starts on the 17th, but I release it early on Friday at 8 a.m. as well as every other unit to give you the weekend to work on your coursework. So if you have the weekend, if you have time during the weekend, it's highly recommended that you just get in and get your coursework out over the weekend so you have the rest of the week to focus on your, um, on other obligations and stuff. So let's go back into the actual course. No questions. I'm going to go back to the orientation. As mentioned, there will be an open lab session um, to talk about the current lesson we're on. As I talked about, there'll be a Wednesday open lab session from 9 a.m. to 11, where you can talk about your current situation and learn more about Canvas, get your coursework done there. Mind you, uh, we did not develop, I did not personally develop the original format to this course. We've made adjustments to fit the needs at Grossmont. So as you're going through this course, if you find any mistakes, any spelling errors, or if you feel that you come across an assignment or something that does not, is, is not clear to you, please let us know via the conversations inbox right away for any item that needs to be clarified or corrected. This is very important here. So depending on your um, technical ability or your experience with technology and learning new things like a learning management system, it will take approximately five to eight hours during each of the five weeks. And this does not include the open lab sessions because those are optional. So that could add more time um, to your commitment to this course. Be mindful of your current workload um, because faculty members who didn't take the, uh, to the account the amount of work it would take to complete this course had the most trouble with this class balancing their current workload. Now I add this line here and I say do not be afraid to let us know if you need to drop this course due to your current obligations. And if you need to, you can withdraw this course at any time by contacting Jim or myself via the conversations inbox. However, I must emphasize, and this is very important here, that by January 29th, 2018, Blackboard is done. You need to be on Canvas. If you have any intentions on using a learning management system for the spring 2018 semester, you need to have an understanding of Canvas. You need to have some form of training in Canvas and be comfortable in learning Canvas by January 29th, 2018. We understand there's probably not a right time during for, for the rest of the year for you to be able to have the time to effectively take this course. I recommend, while it might be challenging now, with your current workload, stick through it. Because if you decide to put this off until the fall semester, it might be even more challenging for you during the fall to get in this Canvas course, get the good training that you actually need, um, Get, so you can be ready for the spring semester. So understand we're going to try to give you as many tips as we can to make sure that you get the most out of this course and how to effectively make the most out of this course. But um, hopefully I encourage you to stay with this during the summer semester because it's going to be a lot more challenging during the fall semester to take this course and get the most out of it. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, in regards to web browsers, uh, I recommend using Google Chrome. You can use Firefox as well, but do not use any version of Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. Now I wanna talk about your final project. Your final project actually starts today. 
Final project for this course is to create the first two weeks of a Canvas course that you plan on teaching for a future semester. So that could be the fall or spring semester. On day one, this course is, is, is going to be used as a guide to help you with your final project. The majority of hands-on assignments will be completed in your GC Canvas Training Sandbox. So again, that's your GC Canvas Training, the sandbox with your last name. Assignments including homepage, creating assignments, you'll be creating all of that in your course. And so when you're actually working on these assignments, and I instruct you, and there's instructions to go into your Canvas Training Sandbox, treat these assignments as if you were actually developing a real course that you are teaching, because you actually are. That's what you're actually doing. So when you, when you have these assignments, whether it's creating an announcement or a content page or a module, you'll learn more about those as the course goes. Treat it as if you were actually creating the actual work. And it will make it a lot easier by the end of the course for your final project to um, make that, um, to complete it successfully. Hopefully that made sense. If not, please let me know if you have any questions in, uh, in the chat. But the final project, the whole goal is by the end of the course, you have a course with at least two modules created with a solid homepage and a syllabus. And then you will leave with enough confidence to finish developing that course for, a, um, for whenever you intend to teach it. Next thing you wanna do is actually make sure you read the course syllabus. The actual syllabus is listed here. You can read that at your own convenience. Also, we talk about the instructor communication policy. So we will respond, both Jim and I will respond to email within one business day. Any inquiries sent over the weekend or uh, even on holidays will be resolved during the following business day. So if you send an inquiry on um, Saturday uh, weekend, uh, you can make sure we'll get back to you no later than Monday. The first point of, uh, the point of entry uh, we'd like you to go through is the Q&A form. If I click on this link here, it'll take me to the Q&A form. Feel free to ask questions regarding the course or any ask for any support along the way. And we can use this as a group. This is not just questions that you're going to ask Jim and I. We're in this together. We're learning Canvas uh, uh, together as a group. So any of you, any other faculty members, please post this here. And if any other faculty members view this Q&A discussion, and if you can answer the questions that any of your, your colleagues are answering, please feel free to ask uh, answer them as well. But otherwise, the, you can always contact us via the conversations inbox for any uh, private, any questions that you wanna ask Jim or myself privately. And then here is a link to a tutorial for a more detailed tutorial on the conversations tool that you can um, watch and learn more about that. Scrolling down is the course summary. This is probably the most important aspect of the actual course. It covers the entire schedule for our course, what's expected and what is due. Course starts today, July 10th, ends on August 18th, where you will post and submit your final project. And you can go through and see what's due at any specific time. So as I mentioned, the Canvas Open Lab is available on uh, 8 a.m. Um, Canvas Open Lab is uh, open from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Friday, all of your coursework for Unit 0 is due, and then Unit 1 is available. And then as it goes through, you can keep up with the rest of the schedule as you continue. So if you ever feel lost or you're not sure on what's expected of you on, on the schedule, review the course summary here under the syllabus tool. Once you're finished, then you can go back to the getting started module and continue. So with, I've covered a lot of information right now. So if there's any other questions that you have on what I've covered, whether it's as far as the duration of the course, how much time commitments, your final project in the syllabus, if you have any questions, please shoot them in the, in the syllabus. Not in the syllabus, in the actual chat. One thing you wanna make note of 
is that you will notice at the line here, it says before you go, there is a mark is done button located in the top right hand corner of the page. Make sure you click that before you go on to the next page. Scrolling up at the very top, if you see this button here, if I click next to proceed in the next point of the module, I won't be able to view that content. That content will be locked. These are prerequisites. These are prerequisite um, things, requirements that I have you do. And you notice here, it says 0 0.1 welcome must mark as done. So I'm going to click on the previous link here. And then I'm going to click mark as done. And then I'm going to proceed on to the next page. So when you see that before is go, make sure you click on that so you can review the next content. Uh, we have a question from MC. MC is asking, is there a way to transfer Blackboard info to Canvas? Yes, MC, there is. However, for the duration of this course and for the first five units of information, we teach you how to build a course from scratch because that's the best way to understand and learn how to use Canvas. And then by unit five, we cover how to transfer um, content like tests and discussions and announcements from Blackboard to Canvas. But all course content for the duration of this course, you'll be creating from scratch. Here's some background information on Jim Hotz and myself. Um, here's the open lab session. So for right now, the one that's solid is for Wednesday from nine to 11, as I mentioned, and then here's the rest of the open lab schedule. We say Tuesday or Wednesday. So either today, by Wednesday the 12th, we will confirm what dates that we're actually going to shoot for here. So whatever is best. So I'm gonna probably send out a survey and then during Jim's open lab session, for those that attend this Wednesday, Wednesday session, we'll have a final confirmation by the end of the 12th on which of those days are for the rest of the open lab sessions throughout the rest of the semester. But they will all be in, they will all be, whether it's Tuesday or Wednesday, they will all be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. in room 55-534. Note on notifications. This is very important. I would, I would encourage you, um, once you get to this, you want to make sure and actually read how and learn how do notification preferences work and how do you set your notifications. It would be a great, uh, highly recommend that you take advantage and, and read over this information and how to read over this information as well as your, your students. One thing I want to take note of as, as an instructor, as you're learning this, notice how do I set my Canvas notification preferences as a student? You're a student right now, but as an instructor, if you find any information within Canvas that you find useful for your students, this is perfect information that you can share with your students as well. Steal anything within this course that you find relevant uh, that can be helpful to your students as well. So this is something that you can definitely include in your, in your, in your course. Real quickly, I want to go over notifications, and I think I might have to leave the student view for this. I'm going to leave the student view real quickly. In notifications, there are a couple options that I want to make sure that you have set for your course. So you want to make sure, I'm going to try to go a little slower on this one, because I want to make sure you actually write this down. So I'm going to go into my account, and then I'm gonna go into notifications. With notifications, there are four options. You can be notified right away, and that is with a check mark. You can send a daily summary, which is a clock. You can send a weekly summary, which is a calendar, or you can send nothing. I don't wanna be notified of anything, that's the X. For you want to make sure that for any announcements, because Jim and I will be using announcements extensively through this course, you want to be notified right away. 
for any submission comments. Submission comments are on the assignments or quizzes that you submit or discussions that we actually grade. You want to be notified right away. For discussions, make sure these are checked off as well. And then for conversations, any conversations um, that you're added to or that you get, you want to be make sure those are there as well. Uh, that notify me right away are checked off as well. That way, if you have this for the default email address that you have for your account, you will make sure that you will get all communication that is sent by myself or Jim throughout this course. So that's again, account notification. You wanna make sure that announcements notify me right away. Submission comments notify me right away. And then discussions and conversations you want set to notify me right away. Let me go back to the actual course. I know I went a little fast with that. So that's why I say I highly recommend that you actually go through and review the how do I, how do notification preferences work and then how do I set my notification preferences. Moving on, I will just continue. I won't need to be in student view. The next thing that is due, so the initial post due is your discussion, which is due by Friday at 11.59 p.m. So this is just a break, a specific icebreaker. You're gonna introduce yourself to the class. Optional, uh, this is a game, this is an optional game. You can provide three statements that are, three statements about yourself, who you are, but include one that isn't true, and then the game is why, for us to figure out which one's true and which one's false. And then, but in addition, I would actually encourage, why are you taking this course? Please feel free to answer honestly. And what do you expect out of it? Please answer at least uh, three. And then I would require to uh, reply to at least two of your classmates posts. Replies are due by Sunday at 11.59 PM. So the initial response to this prompt due by Friday and then by Sunday, reply to at least two of your classmates posts there. And then for the grading rubric, for any discussions that you have here, for the grading rubric, you can click on the gear icon located in the top right hand corner to show the rubric. So I can click here and then I can sit there and say show rubric and I actually show how the assignment is actually going to be graded. So that's that. There's some more information here. This is more information that you're more than welcome to steal. This talks about online uh, rules of netiquette. This is something you're familiar with, but I highly recommend this would be great information for your students that you can use in your course. You also have an assignment here. It's called uh, create a course outline. This is going to, this is something that's very important for you to focus on. So the course outline, it's a good tool to create when used when uh, creating modules. Course outline should cover in sequential order what the student will be focused on for each week. That includes the, the, the module assignments, the assignments, quizzes, reading material, any course discussions. So as you can see here, for the scope of this course and what I mentioned before, you're required to uh, create two modules in your Canvas course. So as you can see here, I have two modules in my course. So one is the actual getting started, unit zero getting started course. And it takes you in sequential order for what I want the student to focus on for this unit. Now, mind you, modules, when we say modules, it's just a container of information with a specific label or a specific context. So for example, this is a getting started module. You can call it unit, you can call it week, you can call it whatever you want, or you could just call it the actual topic itself. But it's just information regarding a specific context that's listed in specific order. So these are the things that I want you as the student to focus on in specific order. There's a couple things about this outline that I want you to pay attention to or notice. Number one, there is an actual label here. So I, I have a numbering convention here. This is unit zero getting started. 
and then each item that I want you to focus on as a student is labeled 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. This assignment right here is labeled 0 0.7. So if you as a student has any issues with an actual assignment, you can say, Mr. Hotz, I'm having issues with 0 0.7. Jim knows right away that's zero, unit zero, item number seven. There's no issues for Jim on um, in miscommunicating or getting confused on what item you're referring to in the actual course. So I encourage you as a requirement, those numbers I would like to see included in your outline for your course. Also, I put little indicators in parentheses where uh, little indicators for you, the student, and for myself for these items so I actually know. If I didn't have this here and I just had this here, I might not know what, the, what I want the student to do. So I have in parentheses, read, I want you to read this, I want you to read this. This is a discussion, this is a assignment. It gives me a quick visual way on, on how my course is structured. So these are two items that I want you to create in your actual uh, in your actual modules. You can write this up in a Word document and then you'll submit it via the submit assignment form, um, just via Word. And again, that will be due on Friday, this Friday, July 14th, 11.59 p.m. And Chris, this is probably, um, if not the most, important assignment of the entire course, it's awfully close to it because it really creates a blueprint for everything that is to come. So before you start on this assignment, you really want to take a very close look at how you teach one of your courses and break everything down into item by item what would you expect your students to do step by step and include absolutely everything that you want your students to do and that if that's all included here it'll save a lot of going back later and oh yeah i forgot this i need to insert that now uh, and this will become the blueprint for your final project and that's a very good point thank you for adding that jim and i, I want to make notes so we currently have there's another instructor sarah martin who's teaching an introduction to teaching with Canvas course that started uh, last month, I believe it was June 12th. And the instructors in that course who did not do this assignment properly are the ones that are having issues now. And they're on unit three or four. And Sarah, she sent me a, a list of five or six instructors that are having issues with the, with the course. And each one of those instructors that are currently having issues struggling in Canvas are the ones that did not do this uh, module assignment um, properly. properly. So you wanna make sure if you have any questions or do not understand anything that I've specifically said here, please ask it in the chat or please send Jim and I a message in the conversations inbox and we'll uh, clarify it. Um, We'll do our best to clarify it, make sure you understand it. And speaking of that, I got a question from Victoria Friedman. By this assignment, do you mean the course outline? So this assignment is to create a course outline. And then you will submit that assignment via um, Canvas. So let me actually go back into uh, student view again so you can actually do this so with student view go into modules Mark is done I have to reply to this reply. I'm actually going through because I have requirements sent through the actual course. So Victoria, so in answering your question, so this is the create a course outline. This is the actual assignment is to create a course outline in Word, just a simple document like I've listed here. And then you'll submit that via the submit assignment uh, button. And then you will uh, use the file upload to submit your file 
for this creative course outline assignment. Um, let me see, this is a great for teaching an online course. How about when we use Canvas AC supplement to traditional classes? This outline seems too comprehensive and detailed. Actually, for courses that are uh, Victoria, so Victoria asked, or Victoria commented, um, she mentioned that this course outline, while appropriate for a face to, for an online course that you're actually teaching, or online, a hybrid course, she was making the comment that she might sit there and think that it might be too much for a course that is only used to supplement your on-campus courses. And there are a lot of instructors that want to do that. I would encourage that in, even for a, even if your intention is to use Canvas to supplement your face-to-face -face course, it's still important to have an outline of what you want to include in that course for it to be a true supplement for your on-campus course. You still need to have some design, some blueprint. You don't have to be as detailed as, as I am. Um, I still would recommend whether it's a face-to-face -face course or um, an online course that you might have an orientation uh, area. But for other items, you just might wanna have your, your PowerPoints or your presentations or videos or links doesn't have to be that extensive as what I have, but regardless whether you're teaching online or you're using Canvas to supplement a face-to-face -face course, I still recommend doing this actual outline to give you an idea on how you wanna blueprint or design your course. I wanna go back to the course that is currently going on right now. And for those five or six instructors that I mentioned that are currently struggling in the course, those are the ones that did not do this assignment properly. And there's about two or three of those instructors that are not using Canvas to teach online. They're using it to supplement their face-to-face -face course. But when you look at the actual course and how it's designed, it's very confusing to sit there and navigate through it. And if I or my gym, if we're confused or if we have, an, if we have trouble navigating your course, whether it's an online course or a face-to-face -face course, we can guarantee you 100% that your students are going to have issues navigating your coursework as well. So it's very important that you uh, work through this assignment. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this. Actually, I'm gonna leave because, leave student view because we're not gonna submit that assignment. Here's some information here. Um, so for the course, you must obtain at least, you must obtain at least 80% or more to pass this course and receive a certificate of completion, as well as 20 hours of professional development credit that you can use for the fall 2017 semester. Um, they're broken down into quizzes hands-on exercises and discussions. And then again, all of this leads up to your final project, which is worth a hundred points. Now, let's talk about late work. I'm gonna talk about late work and then Clark, I, I will get to your question after I talk about our late work policy. Going back to the calendar, as I mentioned, with our calendar, assignments, the unit officially begins on, on a Monday, Assignments are due on Monday or the following Friday. So unit zero, your discussion and your outline is due on Friday at 11.59 p.m. If you miss the deadline and you submit your work on Saturday, 11.15, or on Saturday the 15th, zero points will be assessed. You will not obtain any points you will receive a zero for your coursework. However, you will still need to complete your coursework before you move on to the next unit. Yes, it will be possible to submit assignments early because as I mentioned, every unit is going to be available the Friday before it officially begins. So unit one starts, will be open at Friday 8 a.m. So Victoria, if you completed, if you turn in your your discussion and your or course outline,
by Friday, you can start working on, um, on, your, on unit one, work over it on the weekend, submit it early, and then you will be able to meet the, the deadline for Friday, which is the 21st. Okay, I was just looking, Jim, you answered, you answered Clark's questions. Will it be possible to complete this course by August 4th? Technically, right now, no. We have these set to unlock on specific times. Um, I might talk with Jim about that and figure out if there's a way that we can make exceptions for specific instructors. But right now, we kind of want to guide you through the actual course um, in a specific order because each week there's a lot of things that new come up. But um, I will talk with Jim about that and see if we can make any accommodations for any instructors uh, that want to uh, move at a faster pace. But yeah, I think we can probably do that. Yeah. At this point in time, no, there isn't. So just to answer your question, Victoria. All right, I wanna take a real quick look at an actual module itself. Because unit one, that's the orientation. You have an idea of how the orientation works. By the way, the Q&A discussion listed in the module section is listed here. So if you have any questions, you can uh, access that there. Um, and then for the Zoom, you can't see this in your course once you log in, but the unit zero orientation will be posted here. I wanna break down in how you can properly use uh, the actual unit. So making use of most of the modules. So in unit one, introduction to Canvas, each module starts off with an actual overview page. And I would encourage in your outline too, to actually incur it when you create your course outline to include an overview page for your outline as well. What this overview page does, it gives you a breakdown, a quick breakdown or a synopsis of what you're going to be learning. So for unit one, you're going to be focusing on how Canvas works from both the student view and the instructor view. And you will learn the basics of how Canvas works by filling in a couple of online forms and to create course material. You have your student learning objectives. Participants will, will be able to build a community of online learners through participation in a discussion forum help students connect by updating their profile and sharing communication preferences. And then you're going to also learn how to create an announcement in your Canvas training sandbox. To meet those objectives, you will do these five things. I would encourage to have some form of this. It doesn't have to be extensive or designed well, you know, with these images and stuff like that. But when you create your course outlines, have an overview page, give an idea of what, you know, what this module covers. If it's a week, what are you gonna be covering during the week? What are the outcomes for, what are the intended outcomes? And how do students actually, uh, will, how will they complete these actual outcomes? I encourage something like this to be included in your course outline. Clicking next, you always have the actual schedule for the Canvas Open Labs. I wanna break down now, this is a very important part here. One of the more important com uh, comments that we get from each course is the amount or how overwhelming the course is. And, and faculty members will, uh, will get intimidated by the amount of work that they have for the uh, required reading. So since there is no required textbook that you'll be working out of, any point where you sit there and you'll see a unit one or your unit two, unit three instructional content, that's technically your required reading. And these required readings are broken down into tabs. So what is Canvas? I click on Canvas from the student view. I click on Canvas from the instructor view. I click on Canvas with a rich content editor. And you'll notice that there are actual links here that you're encouraged to review. However, instructors in the past have gotten intimidated feeling like they have to review all of this information before they can continue on, and you don't. I encourage you to review every single tab or read every tab, but when you come across a link here, you, I would like, I, let me say that again. Review every single, read every single tab. Review these links. 
So go ahead and click on these links, but you don't have to read all the content here. Just use it for reference and then bookmark these links in your favorite bookmarking tool for future reference down the road. But you don't have to feel like intimidated that you have to read every single option here. These links are for reference only. And I would encourage only reading these links if you had to go through and read any of these links, if it will help you in complete um, an assignment that you're actually working on, if that makes sense. Uh, da, 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 da. Silas, handouts and post grades, that's all. Canvas looks like creating an entire class. Looks like creating an entire class. Victoria, I'm, the question here, so for someone that's using to supplement their face-to-face -face course, now you do have options. Canvas does have an option for a self-paced training course. If you feel that's more uh, applicable to you, that's something that I've recommended to instructors in, in the past. However, I will attest that there are instructors I've taught, this is the fourth course that we've offered. I've taught three of them myself. And for and there have been many of instructors that have been in your position that have just used Blackboard to post syllabus, handouts, and post grades. And they didn't feel that this course was a little overwhelming for them, just like you. But by the end of the course, they were thankful that they actually took this course. Not only did it help them improve the design of what they were actually offering, it opened up a whole new world as far as how they wanted to design their course. And it also helped them as an actual instructor. So you're more than welcome to sit here and take the actual course. I would encourage, I would ask to at least give it a chance. But if you don't, and you feel like if you continue to work through this course, if you feel like it's too overwhelming for you, you're more than welcome to drop out of it. And you can just send us an email or via the conversations inbox. And then I can send you information on the self-paced changing course. So, and this will be, this is the perfect way for you to be relevant in the, in the changing times. And also if you take this now and down the road, when you're ready to actually teach an actual course in Canvas, you will be more than ready. So I would encourage you to actually state that. And I know I'm specifically talking to Victoria right now, but I'm sure there's going to be other people in this course that are going to be in Victoria's position that are going to feel the same way. So I want to make sure that that's clear. If you're using this and if you feel like it's a little overwhelming, maybe it is, but I encourage you to take a chance and give it a chance because a lot of instructors, um, a lot of instructors who have taken this in the past are thankful that they actually have uh, taken it. And uh, MC, we do need, yes, you do need to take this course if you plan on teaching online, but there are specific scenarios like Victoria who just want to use Canvas to supplement their face-to-face -face course. So there are other training options that are available. So I'm saying this to as a group, if there's any other instructors that are in Victoria's position, um, you do need to take this course if you plan on teaching online or hybrid. But if you're in a situation like Victoria, I encourage you to stay with the course because I guarantee if Victoria stays with it, it will be a benefit to her. But if she doesn't, that's okay. And there's other options for Victoria to go to if she just wants to use Canvas to supplement her face-to-face -face course. And we got one new message. Perfect. If you plan to use Canvas as I use Blackboard, I recommend actually going through this course. It'll be the best form of training that you can actually, um, actually receive. Getting back on track. So with the instructional content, when you go through and you read these items here, go through, read through every tab, review every link. Just go ahead and click on a link, review it. And if you find that it's actually useful for you, feel free to bookmark that in your bookmarking tool of choice that you can refer to at a later basis. But don't feel like you have to review and re or read through every single link that you actually have through. Uh, that, that are here because that's just insane. I wouldn't expect you to do that. Now you have with actual assignments here, when you actually go through hands-on assignments, any hands-on assignment is an assignment that I want you to complete in your Canvas training sandbox. And for unit one, and for unit one your first assignment will be uh, 1.4 to edit your profile. There is a video here that I have that I've recorded specifically that gives you instructions on how to submit this assignment. And then they are closed caption as well. I'm going to play this video 
I don't want you to hear my voice talking over it, but I encourage you when you work through these assignments, watch this video, watch these videos that you actually see. And when you watch these videos, watch them first without following along. What do I mean by that? Instructors in the past will watch this video the first time out and then we'll try to replicate everything, every instruction, that I'm, every instruction that I'm trying to give you and they get lost. So when you watch these videos, watch it first, take notes, and then if you wanna watch it a second time or you can refer to it a second time, that's when you, that's when you can follow along with the video um, as far as uh, you know, the instructions that I'm giving you. Also, if you ever get lost in um, the actual course, if you ever get lost in the actual video and what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to say in the actual video, you can click on this link here. There's direct links to the actual video and there's an actual written script that goes step by step on my instructions on what I'm, uh, what I'm instructing you to do for each assignment. So you can review those notes as well. Um, so you don't feel lost with the actual assignment. So Jim asked a very important question. Does everybody know what a URL is? Do you know how to copy your own, do you know how to copy your own current URL? Very important, yes. So I wanna make sure and reference that. So when we're talking about URLs, we're talking about the address here. Okay, so good. We're talking about the address here. And for simple copy, I can highlight this address, I can copy it, and then I can go ahead and I can paste it, um, right click and then I can paste. Or you can use shortcuts, whether I can select something, I can hit Control C to copy, and then if I wanna paste it again, Control V to paste. It's going to be very important that you understand that because as you're working through your Canvas sandbox, your training sandbox, your assignment will be to submit specific outlines. So for example, with this profile, edit profile, I'll actually go into this. You're going to go in, when you're edit profile, the assignment is to go in and actually edit. When you click on um, people, you will see uh, this is your actual profile here. This link here is what I want you to, and for that 1.4 assignment, this is the URL address that you need to submit. So you would need to copy this using copy, and then you would paste that um, in your assignment submission. And that is covered in the actual video here. So watch this video on first run, Take note of it, don't follow along in the first run, take notes, and then on the second viewing, feel free to follow along and, and go through the actual assignment. Also, make sure you read the actual rubric information at the very bottom, because it talks about how, um, how the assignment will actually be graded. Let's see if there's anything else here. There's an add announcement assignment, that's pretty much standard. And that's pretty much it as far as covering how to get started in the actual course and what to expect with the orientation um, and the uh, unit one introduction to Canvas module. Jim, do you have any uh, thoughts that you want to comment on or, or mention? No, not that I can think of. Um, at uh, Wednesday's meeting, we will actually try some of this stuff hands-on, you know, using everybody's real uh, uh, sandboxes, and we can see, see then if we run into trouble um, mm -hmm. and see where that trouble is. I did notice that uh, in Sarah's current course, there were um, some instructors, more than one, that had to use five or six different submissions to try to get that URL right. So right. maybe I can demonstrate how to test your, uh, your URL before you submit it to make sure it's really the right URL. It is a little bit tricky. I know when I took the class, I had trouble with it the first time through too. 
but those videos actually helped once I started, because those videos, that by, by the way, for people that don't know, it was Jim's course where I actually started doing those videos. Once I started doing those videos, did it help you with your course? Yeah, very much. Perfect. All right, so what I want to do, Jun Yang is asking about Zoom. So for instructors, I believe the address is um, confer conferzoom.org. So Zoom is the video conferencing tool that um, we're actually using. And if you want to sign up, you can sign up for a free pro account through conferzoom.org um, that you can start using it for your own online meetings for your course. So what I'm going to do right now, it's 221 right now. I'm going to unmute everyone. Uh, everyone is unmuted. So anyone that has a microphone, if you want to ask any questions, have any comments about the actual course, feel free to ask. I will, will be here until 2.30. Otherwise, if you are good, you're more than welcome to take off for the day as well. Highly recommend downloading the app for your phone. It's very useful, especially if you don't have a microphone. So, Clark, that was the, the Zoom app. Is that what you downloaded on, on your phone? Yes. Perfect. And that was uh, iPhone or Android? Uh, Android, and it's also available for the iPhone. They said when I tried dialing in on the numbers that they gave, uh -huh. my phone would not connect, so I couldn't like be prompted for putting in any of the meeting information. So once I installed the app, I just you know joined the meeting through the app, and that connected up right away. So you did this whole meeting through your smartphone? Uh, well... Yeah, in a sense, it's on my phone and it's also videos on my screen. Nice. That's why I love Zoom. So conferzoom.org. Yeah, definitely for your courses. This is great. And not to mention the fact, like I said, we're recording these. And with your pro account, you can record these, upload them to YouTube, and then anybody, and, you know, anybody in the actual course can refer to them later. So you can do full-on lectures for your course, for your students. And yeah, I was pretty impressed with what I saw on my phone. I mean, everything that's on my computer screen is also on my phone, albeit very, very small. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Chris, this is Julie. Can you hear me? Yes, Julie, I can hear Excellent. you. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, by the way, I use Zoom all the time, and it's awesome. So, yeah, shout out to Zoom. But um, I understand that there's a sandbox where we're a student and another sandbox where we are an instructor. Correct. Do you really want us to use the instructor sandbox? Or because my course is already built for fall, can I use that to do the submission or, uh, I mean, to build my own course? I or would, do you really want me to do it in the teacher sandbox? In the teacher sandbox. So let's use Julie as an – well, I can't use Julie because it – can you still see my screen? Uh, yeah, but I'm driving and I'm on my uh, – No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I've been driving this whole this. time. <laughs> so, Jim, you can still see my screen? Yes. All right. So what I'm going to do – so, Julie, what I'm doing right now, don't, I don't want to take you off your driving. Your driving is more important than this actual course. Uh -huh. But what I'm doing is I'm bringing up your account right now because I can model you. Uh-huh, yep. Um, so when you, when you actually look back on this video, you can forward to this point and you can see what I'm actually doing. So uh -huh. you can just follow through with what um, I'm talking with you right now. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be – I can actually become you. I can go into your actual course uh -huh. and I can show with the actual students, with the actual – everybody else to actually explain – so right now we are looking at Julie's course. Julie teaches, I believe, at Quia Mecca. You can see right now she has three containers or sandboxes. Blackboard, we call them containers. Canvas, we call them sandboxes. She has a uh, 2017 financial accounting course. She has her own, uh, the GC Canvas training course. So that's GC Canvas training in her last name. And then the introduction to teaching with Canvas course. Now I'm going to take a look. So do you... So you still I don't think I've done much yet in the course, yet. but that's what I'm, uh, that's on my What I would say is I'm assuming, so section 1315, there's not much done in this course because I can actually see, I'm going to uh -huh. click on modules. You haven't done much yeah. here. I would suggest, Julia, that you go ahead and use your training sandbox, and then you'll find that it's very easy to copy okay. from one canvas area to mm -hmm. another. Okay, right. we can do that. Yeah, no problem. Yep. 
and that'll be part of the fun. Is that part of one of the modules is the copying? Yeah, near the end. So at the end mm -hmm. of unit five, there are two mm -hmm. major things that we actually do. After you submit your final project and everything else, there is a guide on how to copy any content, any remaining content from Blackboard to Canvas, if you have anything you want to transfer over. And there's also a guide that, uh, that we walk through that you can uh, refer to on how to transfer content from one sandbox, Canvas sandbox, from one Canvas sandbox. To Does it have to be a, a, a gross mount Blackboard or can it be any Blackboard? So when you're working for the when I say gross mount, that's just, I mean, Right. Well, I like taught at Mesa and SDSU and random places. So if I had a Blackboard course, you can export. Can um, I export that? It's just your, a Blackboard file, right? And then right. Yeah. import that into Canvas. You can use the file and you can import it. Yeah, there are issues with importing Blackboard into Canvas. It's not as though you're going to be able to do an operation and copy your existing Blackboard course into mm -hmm. Canvas. That is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're just too different uh, and, sure. and the philosophy is too different. Yeah, so, that's all right. It might really just be easier to just start over again. Build then. from scratch. However, if yeah. you have content pages that you want to preserve, you can bring those over. At least you can bring them over individually. Uh, yeah. That's usually not a problem. Yeah. We've kind of, I've, I've personally trained, I've gone through three training sessions now i've taught about 150 instructors and for those instructors there were even a lot of instructors that had that mentality they could push a button and copy everything from blackboard to canvas they even tried it too and they soon realized the amount of nightmare that they actually had on their hands and so for the actual course content in and of itself every single instructor that i've taught in canvas so far has made mention that building content the course content from scratch it's mm -hmm. proven to be a lot easier than dealing yeah. with transferring mm -hmm. content from Blackboard to another. The only yeah. thing that we encourage that you can actually do is if you have any tests in Blackboard, those you can bring over. Those we include tests, discussion boards, those things you can bring over. And we recommend that you actually do. But for the actual core coursework and for any content that you've written, kind of like with the content that I've shared um, on, this, uh, on this orientation right now, mm -hmm. that kind of content, it's much easier to build from scratch. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I've been uh, extremely underwhelmed by what I've seen so far with the conversion, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of what you actually get. So, okay, good. Perfect. Thank okay. you. This has been lots of fun, guys. Good. Are there any other, any other questions from anyone else? Um, I believe MC, Yes, I've already downloaded Canvas on my cell since I will probably be traveling during our course. Do we have any other synchronic meetings? So the question is, do we have any other actual Zoom meetings? And the answer is no. Those, um, those meetings, uh, the open lab sessions, you'll be working with Jim Hotson. However, in the future, if you ever want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with myself at least, um, you're more than welcome to contact me via the conversations inbox and I'll be more than happy to um, do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with you. Did we decide the uh, lab is going to be Wednesday? Did I miss the... No, we, so the first open lab session will be on Wednesday, June, July 12th. However, by the end of the day, we will decide on what day the rest of the open lab sessions will be, whether it's going to be Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, got it. And the Wednesday, what time is it? 9 to 11, and it's in... Oh, that's good. 55-534. I know that's, I know that classroom well. Okay. Two doors down for mine. <laughs> uh, Tom asked a question, clarification please. Do we need to upload the outline into the intro to teaching camp or our own sandbox? For the intro to, for the course outline, so the question is, for the, it's 1.7, or let's see, let's see, 0 0.7, the created course outline, you're going to be writing that in a Word document, and you will be uploading it into the Introduction to Teaching with Canvas course okay. mm -hmm. as the assignment. Okay. 
Victoria asks, she's trying to confirm her SMS number, tried to send multiple messages to myself from Canvas, none came. Victoria, via SMS, um, I have personally had issues trying to get SMS to work. It works fine for me now. Um, I have a Galaxy S8 phone on T-Mobile. Previously, I had a Galaxy S7 phone um, from, and I couldn't get notifications, but I get them now here. Jim, you have a Windows Mobile phone from Cricket, and you're unable to get mess SMS messages, right? Correct. I can't get SMS. I can't get web portal SMS messages at all through that service. So it has nothing to do with Canvas other than the way that they generate SMS. This isn't true SMS. It's um, web portal generated uh, simulated SMS. It doesn't always work. Depends on the phone, depends on the carrier. Victoria, what I, uh, what I recommend is actually for your iPhone, go into the iOS or the App Store and download the Canvas app. And on Wednesday, we'll show you how to uh, log into Canvas via your phone and the push notifications. That's what I personally use on my phone, on my, Andro uh, on my Android phone. And um, it's worked out a lot better than doing, uh, doing the SMS. MC, for any questions with our homework, do we just email you? Um, Jim Hotz is the lead instructor for this course. So any questions that you have in regards to homework, please contact Jim via the, the conversations inbox. Do not email Jim directly at his email address. Use the conversations inbox or any inquiries or any questions regarding homework or discussions or anything else. If it looks like a question that might better be suited or might have a wider audience, I may repost that in the Q&A. Yeah, so, and that's a good point. So for any questions, how we're going to do our communication policy. If it's not a private one that you have to address with either myself or Jim one-on-one, -on -one, if it's just a general question about Canvas and the homework, please go into the conversation or please go into the Q&A form which you can go in modules and then you can see in the Q&A discussion. This will be the central point of conversation uh, for any questions regarding this course or any questions on about a specific assignment or anything. Um, if you have a private question that you want to ask, then you can contact either Jim or myself, Jim first, um, in the conversations inbox. And that's how we'll do uh, communication. So currently right now it is 2.33. I got, I'm gonna give it two more minutes. If there's any other questions, please. So we should down. give you what, about two minutes to respond to anything we submit? Sorry? I'm just making a joke. I said we should give you what, two minutes to respond? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll try to, under a minute, I'm trying to work. I'm just saying there's one, there's two minutes left. I wanted to, if anybody had any last minute questions, otherwise we were going to end this session for today. All right. We'll see you all on Wednesday then. All right. You guys take care. And I'm going to send a follow-up email today with a link for this orientation for you to review with uh, um, specific instructions on how to access the course. So looking forward to working with you guys and uh, take care and we will uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Jim. All right. Take Thanks care. Everybody. See you soon. Take care.